And uh, welcome to the um, next uh, presentation. It is my honor today to uh, introduce your next speaker, uh, Laura Volkert. She is a uh, um, Clearwater veteran. She has uh, done a whirlwind tour of roles at Clearwater Developer, SSET, and now is the uh, division lead of Central Services. So without any further ado, Hi everyone, I'm Laura. I've worked at Clearwater Analytics for nine years and in that time I have drawn a number of comics on the whiteboards here. <laughs> but I am not Bob Ross. I do not have his impeccable fro. I'm way more likely to draw X-Men characters than happy little trees. And I will not be beating the devil out of my brushes today because instead I'm going to be teaching you how to just get started with digital art, specifically digital comics. Uh, but I did want to invoke Bob Ross because I wanted to invoke his core philosophy, which is that you can create art. It's not something you need to be intimidated by and that there's an artist hidden at the bottom of every single one of us. I just started getting into digital art this year around April. Um, I had been wanting to get into it for a while, um, most, mostly after last year's Boise Comic Arts Festival when I had I had submitted a short comic story to a local comics anthology. Uh, it was accepted, someone else drew it, and it got, so we were selling the book at the Boise Comic Arts Festival. Uh, so I was tabling with, uh, with a guy named Mike Dreyer, and it was kind of a slow morning. There weren't a whole lot of people coming by our booth to buy our book. So he just got his iPad out and was drawing right in it and drawing some comic book characters, and I'm watching him absolutely mesmerized. And so I asked him what tools he use. He said he uses this app called Procreate, which is what we're using here. It's a very full-featured app. Uh, it's only $10 on the iPad. Um, I'm also using the Apple Pencil, which allows you to draw right in the app. You can draw in the app with your finger too, but this allows you a lot more control, and it's pressure sensitive, which is nice. Um, makes for a very natural drawing experience. Um, because I'm still pretty new to digital art, I am going to be sharing some advice from some people who have doing, been doing it for quite a bit longer than I have. They're from my drink and draw group, which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> we get together about once a month. Uh, we meet at a restaurant or a bar and we have a drawing prompt and we all kind of draw together. It's a lot of fun. Highly recommend starting something like that uh, in your own friend group. It's a great way to keep drawing. So let's go ahead and start looking at Procreate. So this is Procreate. Um, and down here at the bottom, there are four different pictures that come standard right in the app. They are there to show you what it's possible to do with Procreate and also, I think, to make you feel very bad about yourself. <laughs> so I recommend not looking at them too much. Instead, go ahead and fill up Procreate with your own work. Here's kind of some examples of what I have done. Um, I feel like my art style was able to port over very nicely into the digital realm. Um, so this is an example of something that I did on paper and pencil. Uh, I am doing an Xmas ornaments series this year. Um, various X-Men characters doing holiday things. Uh, this was one that I just did on, on paper and pencil and then inked on paper and scanned in. I have not done anything on it in Procreate. But that gives you an idea of what my art style looks like. And here's one that I did entirely in app. Um, you can see the art style is very similar, but uh, was really easy to add some nice color, add in a background very easily behind my foreground character, even after the fact. Um, also in here, I've got some 8-bit characters. Those are super easy to do in Procreate, and I will be showing you how to do that in just a moment. We have a few other things. I've got this... Um, postcard series I've been doing, and some more X-Men characters, but let's go ahead and jump on into how to do an 8-bit character. So first things first, I'm going to create a new canvas. That's the plus sign here on the top right, and I'm just going to select a square. 
going to shrink this down so everything's in view here. And then next thing, we are going to use our brush library. Kind of on the top left, it's already selected the little blue paintbrush. Most of the time, I just use the sketching and inking here. So I've got an HB pencil here and a technical pen. Those are the tools I like to use in real life. So those are the ones I use in the app the most. But right now for an 8-bit character, we're going to jump over to textures for this grid option. And can anyone tell me why I would want to use that? Yeah? Because it, 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 cause it looks like bigger pixels. Exactly right. Uh, also, though, um, Procreate allows you to do drag and drop colors. So once you have any kind of an enclosed space, which we do here with a grid now, you can just drag and drop in your colors for an 8-bit character. And you can do that in like 10, 15 minutes. It's super easy. So I'm going to go here. I've got this 8-bit Mario character that I found. I even have the hex code colors on this. You can Google that. Uh, you can Google your favorite 8-bit character and Google hex codes. You can probably find something. Um, so for his, the red for his hat and his overalls is B40F13. So we're actually going to use that. B four zero F one three. There are a few different ways you can put input colors in Procreate. Um, one is by value here in hexadecimal under the value section. Anytime you want to change colors, though, it's just that top right circle. So we're going to select that. And then we just touch it and drag and drop onto the screen where we want our colors. So do, 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 do. And there's his hat already. <laughs> Um, like I said, you could probably finish up something like that in about 10 minutes. But I wanted to show off some other cartooning techniques in here um, that are also really simple to do because they just involve basic lines and basic shapes. And those are ones that Procreate has kind of some inbuilt features that really help you create those. It's, it's, it would ju be just like doing them in you know, your Photoshop or whatever, but you don't even have to use a mouse for it. So it's really nice. So let's start a new canvas again. Um, I'm going to go with a horizontal canvas. So kind of 11 by 8.5. Uh, if anyone, is anyone following along on their own iPad? Okay, I'm going to be going pretty fast. So late, this is going to go up on YouTube later. So feel free to, if you want to go along, uh, kind of, if you can't quite keep up, look up the YouTube clip later, and then just like pause me whenever you need to. OK. So I'm going to want just kind of a, oh, first things first. Um, it is DevCon. So I figured something appropriate to do would be to have a happy little robot turning on the, uh, the light bulb from our DevCon logo. So first things first, let's go ahead and import the DevCon logo. Obviously, not, almost none of you probably will have, whoops, will have that on your, uh, on your iPads. Uh, we're going to go, we're going into the wrench menu, the add button, and insert a photo. Um, so if you don't have that, feel free to like make a picture of, a, of a happy little robot petting your dog or something like that. Um, now that I've got this in my um, in frame here, it's a little bit small. So I'm going to, I've got my, this arrow tool selected. It's good for doing basic transforms like moving or enlarging. I'm going to select uniform down here so I don't uh, kind of torque it all weird. That's a pretty good size, I think. Uh, but it is facing the wrong direction. 
as, for my purposes, I want it coming from the ceiling, so I'm going to flip it vertically. That's the down here on the bottom, the kind of below uniform again. And I just drag it up with my finger. And now we've still got that DevCon text there, uh, which great for a logo, not great for the picture that I want. So we're going to select and you know crop that out. So we have our little select tool at the top next to the arrow. It's that kind of curvy S kind of thing. I'm going to blow up my picture so that I can get, uh, get a pretty good select on that. If you ever mess up, it's two ta tap with two fingers uh, is undo, tap with three is redo. And I'm going to have to redo there. There we go. I've got a rectangle around our light bulb. So now I can just hit duplicate down here at the bottom. And what that does is it saves it into a brand new layer. This is your layers menu, or uh, yeah, your layers menu. It's going to be your best friend once you start really getting into Procreate uh, because you want to always be checking back here to make sure that the layer you're drawing on is the layer you intend to draw on. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete the layer underneath that still has the text on it. And now we just have our light bulb and that's all. Um, and now I think it's a good time to get into a bit of advice from my drink and draw group. Whoop. So, this is my friend Steve Wilhite. He, uh, he's semi-professional actually. He has done some artwork on the FUBAR comics, which are kind of a horror slash historical fiction book. Uh, and his advice to me was, I learned to lock my layers after who knows how many times I colored on, penciled on, or inked the wrong layer. That is a really good idea to do. Uh, I don't want to be penciling on my light bulb layer because I want to be able to take my pencils out eventually. So let's go ahead and lock this layer. There we go. And now we're ready to start with pencils. So I'm back to my rush library. Uh, back to sketching, and I have an HP, HB pencil selected. Choose your favorite pencil, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to go with a basic gray. And I'm not really concerned about this looking perfect at this point. I'm just getting a basic layout in. So I want kind of a cylindrical robot head. Mm. Ah, see, this is why you lock your layers. I almost drew on it. I need to do a new layer, so back into my layer menu and plus. So we're doing kind of a, eh, I think I want him more off to the side. So kind of our cylindrical robot head, kind of a little neck there and a boxy body. And I'm going to have his arm curving out to the right here. And that's so I can have plenty of room for a speech bubble coming out here. I'm going to have a cord coming from the light bulb and we're going to do kind of a little clampy hand here to turn the light bulb on. And that's all I really need for the pencils. I just wanted this basic layout. So that's going to work. So I'm going to move now to doing some inks. So new layer. Um, one thing that you need to, one thing that's a little bit of an adjustment, I feel like, when you are moving from paper and pencil to digital is knowing when to do a new layer. And you, uh, so you could follow um, a piece of advice from another of my drink and draw friends, which is draw everything on a new layer. You can group or merge them later. And we'll get back to what grouping and merging entails in before too long. But at a minimum, I feel like sometimes it's helpful to have some, some guidelines about when to start a new layer. I like to think of it in terms of the comic creation process. So if you've looked recently at the credits page on a comic book, typically you're going to see, um, in addition to your writers and editors, you're going to have uh, a different person on pencils, on inks, on colors, and on lettering. So. Um, that is 
I like to do different layers for all of those at a minimum, and sometimes more than one per, uh, per that part of the process. So like I'll have multiple, um, multiple colors and inks where I have foreground characters and background stuff, or um, multiple pencils where I'm just roughing in shapes or like getting a more finalized look for my character before I start to ink. But let's go ahead and do a new layer for inks. And I'm gonna shift to a technical pen. And this is a little bit awkward, so I'm just gonna try picking this up. And now, t so this is kind of nice. You see it just kind of snapped into place, this nice arc. I had a kind of a rough one before. All you have to do is get kind of the basic shape you want and then hold your pen there or, or your pencil there until it snaps into place. This is a little too far out for me though. Uh, so I'm gonna hit edit shape here at the top and then just kind of move that into where I want it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this again, kind of how we did before. And can anyone tell me why I wanna do that? Right, the bottom half of the cylinder, the bottom half of the head. So we're gonna hit duplicate again and just move that down. And now we're ready to do a straight line connecting them from one edge to the other. And again, just like with the curves, all you gotta do is kind of wait until it's, hold it until it snaps into place. Um, gonna use the eraser tool now at the, uh, at the top, kind of at the right, um, and just kind of clean up that line at the back of the cylinder, behind where he wouldn't see it. And now we're ready to move on to the neck. I like to do kind of a little Kung, uh, undo. It interpreted that as a straight, a couple of straight lines, which wasn't what I wanted. I like, I like to do a little concave neck, but you could do a straight line. It's kind of, it's your choice. It's your robot. And we're making this look a little three dimensional. So I'm doing this kind of, this wedge out this direction. Diagonal line out this direction. So we can have kind of a box look. And now we're ready to start in our on our arm. So again, kind of a nice curve line up here. And it just snaps into place. Okay, I'm gonna have to edit this one because A, it's a little thicker in places than in some places than others and also it doesn't connect to the box that is not what i want i might go ahead and redo that one there we go I think it's good enough it's a little thick in places. It's a little cartoony. Cartoons are very forgiving. So we're gonna go ahead and do this kind of little clampy hand here. Second kind of circle ellipse inside and make it look a little three-dimensional again by doing an interior curve. Just need to connect that again so we can add in some shadows in a minute. Sometimes it's best just to kind of go in with your pencil to enclose a space. But you need to have enclosed spaces in order to do the drag and drop color. And that makes, that really makes creating with Procreate a, a breeze. 
I'm just going to clean that up in there and we'll call that good for the clampy hand. And all I got to do here now is a little touch up on the neck. Let's erase that line down there and let's do another line at the base. Kind of curvy line there. There we go. And I think we're ready now. So I think this is a good, this dark gray is a good color for shadows. So we're ready to start doing coloring, but let's go ahead and jump to a new layer. I just remembered, remembered something. So what's gonna, I, I'm about to run into a problem if I was to just do some dragging and dropping of colors right now. And can anyone tell me why? Yeah. Uh, it's not because of the pencil sketches, but I can remove that because it's dis it is a bit disruptive. So let's do that. Yeah. Definitely a good idea to do colors in a new layer if you wanted to erase them and try a different color, uh, as you noted, but that's not the reason. Yes? Um, yeah, because these are, we have two different uh, layers here, actually. So she said um, we have kind of a, a, some blanks in our canvas. So if, you, if I was to... Um, drag and drop color in, things would spill out. Because you see right here, these are on two different layers, so that is not an enclosed space. If I were to do the front of that cylinder, it's not, one, uh, it's not in one layer, so it will spill out all over the place. So we need to group these, as I kind of touched on earlier uh, with John Greener's advice. And the way to do that, you just touch the one layer, drag it onto the other, and now we have a new group. Then we touch the group, Touch it again and flatten. And now this can all be treated as a single group. We're going to copy that into a new layer, and that way we can play around with the colors however we want. Uh, and I could discard this if I wanted this next layer if I wanted to if I didn't like the colors in it. So let's go ahead and I think this dark gray is going to be good for some shadows. So we're going to start dropping in there. Yep, correct layer, always good to check. And I think the neck as well, since the way, the direction the light bulb is shining, it's shining in from the side. So I don't think it's gonna be hitting that neck. I also think it's gonna be, we're gonna be casting a shadow from the head, but not directly underneath the head. It's gonna be a little offset because of the angle of the light bulb. So we're gonna draw a curved line kinda here. and drop in our shadow. And now let's pick a lighter shade of gray for the shade of gray, for all of the surfaces that are facing us. Um, we have our color wheel here, that could be good, but I like to use the values again here and we have a black and white slider that can be really good for just, if you just wanna uh, lighten a shade that you're already using. So we're gonna select that. I'm going to use that for my arm, for the front of my body, for the clampy hand, and the face. And now I'm going to select another even lighter color for the top of the head and the top of the body. There we go. Things are pretty well roughed in. Things are looking pretty good. Um, I am going to... I think we're about ready to start on some detail work, and I think that's another good excuse for another layer. Um, and let's get some more advice from my drink and draw friends. This is John Greener again. He says, you can do several takes for a part of the drawing on different layers and toggle between them by turning the visibility on and off for them to see which you like best. Um, so as an example of that, I have uh, an earlier version of my robot. Um, and so you could be doing a happy little robot or depending on you, he, how you feel about the singularity that day, you could do an angry little robot. <laughs> um, 
if you, you could do a control panel kind of on the front, kind of like what I got here, or you could do some fun gears or something like that. It's all up to you. You get to decide. But I'm going to do a happy little robot today uh, because we're invoking Bob Ross. So we're just going to do some simple ellipses again. I'm going to select. I need to select that gray that I had. And I also realized I need to do my pull cord for my, um, for my light bulb. So let's do that real quick. This doesn't have to look perfect. The perfect is the enemy of the good. I think we all know that as developers. So let's go ahead and, oh, um, so we have a black, we have black right now. And I want to get back to one of the shades of gray that I was using earlier. So what I do in that case, there's this little square between the two sliders on the left hand side. We select that and this little uh, circle gizzy pops up. And I just kind of slide that over my picture until I get the shade of gray that I want captured. So now I have my dark gray again. And we're going to do some ellipses here. These don't have to be exactly the same size. Again, it's a cartoon, and cartoons are forgiving. We're going to do a straight line here across for the mouth, and a curve line on the bottom. And now I'm going to switch back to black for the pupils. A couple more ellipses. I'm going to, we got something a little missing here. I'm going to touch that up right there. That's much better. Back to black. And let's fill in our pupils. And then we're going to select some white to fill in our irises. Let's go back to our hexadecimal and we'll just do F -f 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 for white. There's our irises and we're going to draw some teeth in now. We'll reselect our dark gray. These teeth do not have to be perfect. Again, it's a little cartoony and also everybody knows robots can't chew. Now, a curved arm might look a little weird on a robot, so to kind, of ex to kind of show why that's actually pretty normal, we're gonna make it look a little segmented here by drawing some curves along the, along the arm, something kind of like that. And we're also gonna want to do some shadow along the the bottom end of that arm, I think. So let's, I guess we still have our dark gray selected, so that's perfect. Going to do, again, kind of a curved line. Connect things up. probably want to do the shadow before you do the segments. Just realized I never did an extra layer for my, um, for my features, but uh, definitely if you, uh, but I was pretty sure that I was going to want to do a happy robot. If you get into something where you're like, I want to try something, but I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not, that's when you definitely want to do a new layer when it comes to detail work. But I think we're pretty good now. Um, I'm not going to, I don't really have time to get through the whole thing here. So let's just do a quick word balloon. And that's going to be on another layer for sure. So wrench menu again. We're going to add some text. And if you are anything like me, this font looks really jarring um, because you probably grew up with comic books 
where it's hand lettered and it does not, you, does not look like a computer font at all. So this looks weird. Fortunately, we have ways to fix that. So first off, let's move this down real quick. And second off, let's, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna, here we go. There we're back in our text. So now we can edit style here with this blue button on the right. Um, I have, a, there are some fonts in here that look a little more like handwriting. So you can use that in the meantime, but what I did was I created a font based on my own handwriting. Um, I used this website called Calligrapher and basically downloaded a couple of templates that had, you know, your lowercase and uppercase letters, some punctuation in there, filled them out with a fat Sharpie, scanned them in, um, uploaded them to the website, and because I uploaded two of them, I got to pick and choose between which characters looked best from each sheet. And that way, um, that way I uh, was able to build my font and just download that file to my iPad. I used this program called iFont that, used, that allowed me to kind of incorporate the font through all of my other programs in here, like this one. And that's how I get to be able to use my own handwriting as a font here in Procreate. And let's just draw a quick little word balloon around that. Back to our word balloon layer. Let's undo that. Hmm. There we go. Just going to edit the shape a little bit because we like to have our uh, we like to give our words plenty of room to breathe. And then I'm just gonna draw a little tail here, pointing to the robot. And just erase that little bit in there. And we have a happy little robot that I think Bob Ross would be proud of. Any questions? The question is, do they have a library of commonly used shapes? Um, I don't know that I have seen anything like that. Um, but the fact that you can kind of create your own so easily from their custom inbuilt um, functions that snap circles and ellipses into the, the shapes you want works pretty well. Yes. Have you ever tried many banks? Have I ever tried what? Many banks. It's like a free art that's still set in the qu The question is have I ever tried mini bing? Many bang? Many bang? Uh, I have not. Uh, sounds fun though. Says it's something I should look into. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Um, the closest I've come to something like that is Oh, so the question was some of the, fa the fancy inbuilt, uh, the, the pictures that come on the app had some, we're doing some really fancy things around color with shading and um, some bright highlighting. This is the closest I've gotten to this, to that, um, which is kind of this, um, the word is escaping me now, but where you kind of ha fade the color. Um, and that I was able to do using the, um, the airbrush here. I would say, uh, and I, I found, I figured out how to do that uh, basically, even though they don't have a gradient, they don't have a gradient tool in here. I was able to figure out how to use the, um, 
the airbrushes to do this effect by looking at some YouTube videos. Uh, there are so many good YouTube videos for Procreate that'll tell you if you are looking for a specific technique, they'll kind of show you how to do it. I highly recommend just playing around with that. YouTube is your friend. Yeah. Can you use the Apple Pencil in a non-Apple tablet? Can you use the Apple Pencil in a non-Apple tablet? I don't know. Um, that's something I'd have to research. There, the, other, the other question was, are there other smart pencils that you can use? Um, I'm pretty sure that there are. I know that there are ways at least to pair a non-Apple Pencil uh, stylus with your iPad for use in Procreate. Yeah. Just to follow that, there's a Microsoft Pencil that's pretty good too. He says there's a, a Microsoft Pencil that's pretty good too. Uh, we're, is that we're at five? Okay. Any more questions? Um, my wife also uses Um, the question, so Travis asked, uh, she, he said that his wife uh, uses Procreate and was a little annoyed that you don't have CMYK colors. As you can see, there's RGB in here, and you could do hexadecimal colors, but there's not C a CMYK uh, color picker. Um, and he wanted to know if there were other, um, other things that were missing in here that uh, that I was a little annoyed by. And I, I must say, I have not done that much Photoshop. So a lot of this, would, I, I was aware of some things you could do in Photoshop that, um, but I'm frankly not missing them because I didn't, that there are probably a lot of other things like that that you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in here. I frankly don't miss them because I'm used to this app. <laughs> Other questions? All right. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>